This is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous comedy store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony Volume 2. Give it up for Tony Dokey, fuck yeah, always the best, guys. Only the best here at Kill Tony from the very first second. Uh, what's up, Monday night? Packed ass belly room. This is so much fun. It's getting out of control, Brian. People are finding out about awesome. our, what used to be our own little secret. I know, and I can't wait to take it on the road I in know. two weeks. Toronto. We're going to Toronto. It's selling out. This will sell out. This is a huge place, too. This is already hundreds of of tickets sold yeah. Toronto yeah that's right be stunned you are at a show that has already sold hundreds of tickets in Toronto what the fuck you're at home base right now on a Monday night and this is exciting but Toronto is going to be crazy not only am I doing the roast of Ron Jeremy a couple days before Kill Tony which is going to sell yeah. out but just added to the dais of the roast of Ron Jeremy Brian Redman, <laughs> yeah. ladies and gentlemen. My first roast. He's going to pop his roast cherry. But most importantly, I get to make fun of Brian Redman for a minute or two in public, which is going to be great. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just going to have, you know, just... seven top-notch ace jokes that will get applause breaks. It won't Jesus be that crazy. Uh, now I have to try. Actually, I no. have to do something, get some different kinds of weed, sit back. Look at videos of you in slow motion. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> the videos in slow motion, that's just uh, that's a whole different thing you're talking oh. about. Uh, but you were close. I, I would say that the majority of great roast writing comes from uh, a lot of weed smoking. Yeah. Because you, you, you daydream for a second, then you come back, and it's like a whole new thing again. <sighs> now that everybody knows how to write a roast joke... Uh, Let's talk about tonight's show, shall we? First of all, I'm very excited about it. It's the return of two of our favorite guests ever, but we'll get to them in a second. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Elise Lane, our one and only sponsor right over there, everybody. She cooked us some delicious food tonight. She's out of control with how good this you food this? is. You see it's this? Unbelievable. Uh, what? Wow. <laughs> Holy moly. Mm. Put, put your hands together for this uh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I used to read the, uh, we've been doing this for a little while, and I used to read the recipe, but then I realized it's so much funnier if uh, our buddy with a speech impediment, uh, the runaround producer of this show, Josh Martin, everybody, has been saying it for the last few weeks. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Did you just toss that box over there? It actually, if it saved itself, if you looked, it, it actually saved it inside it the containers. It's, Lost it's some cheese. <laughs> still edible, everybody. And it's going to be delicious. And it was made from the lovely Elise Lane. She's on Twitter at Elise Lane, E-L-I-S-E-L-A-I-N. And uh, guys, now Josh Martin reads the recipe. And oftentimes it's very hard for him to read it. So what we decided to do a few weeks ago is if he stumbles or stutters on any word at any point, Brian gets to tap him in the balls. That's right. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Come on, Monday night. Are you ready to see if Josh Martin gets hit in the nuts? That's right. It's Josh Martin hitting the nut time, everybody. Now, the name of the game is simple. Elise Lane made us an amazing meal. She is a gourmet chef, everybody. Sometimes the things she makes are really hard to enunciate and pronounce. Now, I used to give Josh the piece of paper right away when I first started this, and then he'd get time to look at it and actually see it, decipher the words, and come up with a bit of a plan. So this week, I'm not going to hand them this until the very last second. Are you guys ready for this or what? Now, again, if he misses a word, he gets bonked in the balls, which we've actually found out in the last couple weeks that he seems to actually enjoy. Yes. So here you go. 
Uh, it's fr- it's Start reading. French. It's in French. Start reading. Jean t'ai pris, merci, s'il vous plaît. Un film, je ne comprends pas. Quel temps fait-il? Wow, he nailed it. There you go. It turns out Josh speaks complete French. Um, and then it says, just kidding, fuck you, Josh, on the other side of the page. Oh, what does it say underneath that? Wait, 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 stop looking at it. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, just Why you wait a second? Hold on a second. When did this turn into he gets Charlie horse the whole time? Wow. <laughs> what is this? Is I'm just getting it's just close enough. And, and you're, I think you're over swinging. Like I mean, if you hit him like that, right. I did. I did a sloop. The, the, yeah, the droopy there arm. Go. There you go. Uh, Trust me, I got this. You won't be hitting but, in the but balls the, today. Oh shit! Look at listen to that confidence. If you fuck up now, you deserve it. All right, go. Uh, just kidding. Fuck you, Josh. Garlic flatbread with Italian sausage crumbles. Butternut squash ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that was this week in Josh Martin skipping a word. Thyme, truffle, honey, and maldon sea salt. Very good. <laughs> wow. It makes it so much better when you talk shit right before. Yeah, like, there's job. no way I'm getting this one wrong, guys. <laughs> yeah. I believe that was an exact quote. I can't believe the joke, actually, he read it fine, but not the real one. Yeah, like he's read cents. it perfectly in French. Josh, you should just speak French. <laughs> he speaks perfect fucking French, the kid. Horrible English. That's hilarious. Born and raised in America. By the way, that, again, that was a delicious meal made for us by our one and only sponsor, Elise Lane, sitting right over there. That's E-L-Y-S-E-L-A-I-N. She is on Twitter under that name. She's on Facebook and Instagram at the girl with the pan. Guys, that's not even the whole show. Can you believe that? <laughs> I know. You see, Josh, that was a stumble deep on a word, and you're like, how do they even follow that? We haven't even started yet. Every week on this show, we have a brand new head of security to keep us safe. For many episodes, it was a guy named the Iron Patriot. He screwed us over, left the show. He said he's too big for the show. Started showing up on TV sets saying, you don't know who I am, let me on the lot. And now makes scary videos of all of us like he's going to murder us. Very scary. So don't, don't go to his YouTube page for evidence. I mean, now that you know about it, many <laughs> listeners, I'm sure that you will. But, uh, it's creepy as fuck. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> creepy. What he did was he took songs that he made when he was in a band 30 years ago and went through like every picture that's ever been put out of us on the internet like pictures and photos I've never even put out I I don't know how he got these photos I'm in the same boat as you on this one and anyway it's just a photo album of photos that come up during the song like me over all the years like there's some pictures of me I'm like seven in it yeah yeah. Yeah, exactly. No clothes either. So if we if you ever if you ever find out that we're killed or missing, it's because uh, a guy that looks like that. That looks like this. Uh, <laughs> that's what we're looking for. But uh, since he left us every week since then to show him cuz he said you'll never be able to replace me was one of his lines. So to show him exactly how replaceable he is, every single week since he left us, we've been replacing him with a different person each week. Yeah. We bought a suit off Amazon Prime. It was like 25 bucks compared to this guy who we had before with a $5,000 suit. Maybe it was 3000 yeah, I think looked, it, was, yeah. it was like 4000 yeah. Anyway. It was actually $75 on Amazon Prime. 75 All this I mean, stuff? all this stuff. Well, with There's the speaker, speaker box. box. That yeah. was $10 right because there. Because the, ori- <laughs> the original Iron Patriot had a speaker box. For some reason, it came out of his crotch. Yeah. So we always have that farthest mic lowered. Because we wanted to keep that one tradition alive of yeah. the, uh, it's the one thing that really stuck other than the suit was the crotch speaker. Put your hands together for this week's head of security. Rising young comedy talent. This is his second or third time being the Patriot because we love him so much. It's Scott Kid Patriot, everybody. There he is. He's got swag. Let a guy be the Patriot a few times. He gets a lot of confidence, huh? Look at that entrance. I like your style. How's it going, Scott Kid? Pretty good. I got the voice box sticking in order. You know, it's not all uh, running around my nuts like last time. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember last time. Did you just put it in your underwear? Uh, that would have been a better idea. Yeah. No. Um, That's what a lot of Patriots have been doing lately is just putting it in their underwear. Because oh, yeah. we're all comics. We can share. I'm glad I rubbed it on my face earlier. Yeah. Um, Jesus, well, Scott, yeah, you're on fire not. already. 
really good. No, I have a uh, Velcro belt from back when I was a medic, and I just stuck one Velcro to the other. Ta-da! Holy shit. There you go. You're wondering, what kind of comedian can we get to dress up like that? That kind of comedian, guys. That's right. I've noticed a lot of comics use Velcro. For what? I don't know. Just a lot of people around here, we talk about Vel- Velcro more than normal. Interesting. Have you noticed that? Like, even you were talking about Velcro last week. I think, I was, yeah, because I was talking about the Velcro for that. It's been popping up in my life a lot, but only because we've had problems uh, with the speaker box on the Patriot belt right. the last few weeks. That's, that's just the world I live in, people. That's Tony Hinchcliffe problems right there. I need, what's it fucking called? Velcro, Velcro. for the Patriot <laughs> Uh, Scott, thank you for joining us. You excited about tonight's guest? Of course. Awesome. Let's get into that, shall we? Tonight is a really, really special panel because, you know, I've done, this is actually episode 75 of Kill Tony that you're at, ladies and gentlemen. That's the official number. And, uh, and, um, uh, what the fuck was I saying? Oh, yeah. Very rarely have I had, because uh, I have so many comedian friends, very rarely have we had repeat guests, but these two guys are literally two all-stars at this show, and I'm so excited to have them both at the same time. Extreme repeat guests. I believe this is both of their fourth, third or fourth time. But fan favorite. Everyone loves these guys. Everyone loves these guys, and you're going to love them too. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sam Tripoli and Kirk Fox. There they are. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome back to the slaughterhouse. Good to be house. back in the saddle. That's right. What's been happening? Just living and loving, sinning and winning, brother. <laughs> Trying winning. to be a goddamn You're champion. Winning. Sitting and winning. We're sinning and winning, making bad Mostly decisions, shitting. getting paid well to do it. Mostly sitting. A lot of sinning. Those the sin keeps my teeth white. You know what I'm saying? That's what. That's what. That's what you enjoy. It's like the weird shit. I like my vices. All my hobbies are felonies. Anybody else got that? <laughs> That's who I am, dude. That's what I enjoy. Now, Sam, I have a, I, I'm part of your uh, podcast, uh, Fantasy Football League. You do a great sports podcast yes. called Punch Drunk with Ari Shafir and Jason Tebow. Yep. And uh, I'm currently in your Fantasy Football yes, League. Yes, you, you are. Get, you guys were nice enough to let me join. Are you, know, you a player? Regret uh, it. A team? Regret it. I'm what, a team. What are you? The, the Hinchcliffe winners is a team. Yes. Would, would you like to tell these people what I'm doing in your league right now? Well, you are somehow um, miraculously scoring the least amount of points, That's yet it. having the most wins the most wins i'm Who six and, I'm, for that i'm six Guy six and one everybody six and one in fantasy six football. and one the name of my team just to let you know my angle to fuck with people full-blown is the Hinchcliffe winners <laughs> so when i beat these guys it's fucking awesome oh, it drives them crazy awful, you mean just fucking painful but something just happened recently on your podcast. What I love about it, it, my favorite thing is this thing you guys do called Bag of Bets. Yes, Bag of Bets. Can you tell us what just happened and why you just cringed when I said that? <laughs> well, well, recently, recently or yeah. recently? Okay, well, the, we do a Bag of Bets. It's like sports and guys, who, the whole point behind, the whole premise behind Punch Drunk is, you know, comics love talking shit about sports and they all think they're experts even though... They've never really played professionally, so uh, we just got together and we argue really bad. And then if you if you have a really strong argument, you want to lay it on the line. You do a bag of bets, and we've done some crazy shit. We did. Uh, I lost a bet to Ari in bowling. I had to watch two hours of uh, gay pornography. Um, <laughs> on boner pills and ecstasy. That's a true story. Yeah. And it's like Clockwork Orange style. Like, you had to look at the TV. Yeah, because I had fucking Tebow sitting there grilling me. And Now, did you try to cross your eyes or, like, blur your eyes on purpose? You you had to watch two hours? Two hours. But they only only wanted you to watch one, correct? (laughs) But I just tried to build up a little credit in case I had to do it again. Uh, But, no, so, yeah, I had to do it, and I sat there, and Tebow sat there, and it was really a bad, a horrible thing, because the fans could call in and request what kind of porn I got to watch, and it was fucking horrible, because we, everyone would be like, compilation porn, compilation porn, now, when other people do it, they did a full porno, and they got story and plot that they could buy a little time with, we just went to the greatest hits of the worst hits, you know what I'm saying? So, was yeah, there t- one guy you kept seeing in a lot of videos? No, that was the weird thing. Like, it's like in porn, like straight porn, like 
You see the same. I do a joke about it. Like you see the same chicks over and over again. You start feeling like you're dating. You ever done that? You're like, I gotta fuck other people. Oh time. shit! She's wearing her hair differently. Yeah, right. It's like it's the same people. Gay porn. It's like this dude. This dude's first and last show. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's it's weird. It's, well, they, no, it's because you've only watched two hours of gay porn and you've watched a hundred thousand hours of regular porn. Well, we don't know that for sure. Yeah, but even <laughs> if you went to like, but they measure gay porn. Porn, and dog porn, you would see well. the same chick over and over again. What I want to, what I find strangest about this story that I never knew before was that Jason Tebow was in the room with you while you're watching Gabe. Yeah, it was in the studio. We what? did it. Oh wow! It wasn't at my house. I wasn't jerking off, and he was uh, spotting me. What are you oh, talking I about? See. So you were watching it. You were watching it in the studio for two hours. Did you guys make a show out of it? Yeah, that's great. There's actually an episode we're, of it. Now did Tebow like unbutton his shirt like he usually does and just hang out there? Like yeah, was exactly. Te- was Tebow watching it too? No, he didn't. He <laughs> <laughs> he was far on the side of the screen. He just sat there in karate stance in case something <laughs> flew out. So you were looking at porn and him at the same time. We so it was a- almost like he was in the porn. Yeah, right. I mean, if it got there, I guess it could go there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I f- it was weird that we've done different stuff. Like Ari had to wear a diaper the whole time for a whole day. He couldn't take it off. He sh- if he shit his pants, he had to stay in it. Uh, uh, are you serious? Uh, what, what? Ari lost a bet to Nick Sw- uh, Yusuf, and he had to wear Yusuf's jizz socks for 24 hours. Oh, yeah, and they were bad too. I I was there for that exchange. But what I don't understand is that oh well, we got a great one with uh, your your uh, production assistant, Josh. Oh yeah, what's this one? If I finish in the here's the bag. He wants to get in the comedy store main room, fantasy league. And he was there when we were drafting. He convinced me that I had the worst team ever. And if I finish in the bottom two, I got kicked out of the league. He took my spot. But if I finish out of the top two, he has to wash his face with Punch Drunk's jizz rag, which we all get the bus went off, and he gets one swoosh of the water under. There seems to be a real... Oh. There's a real gay theme. That the scene, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> that seems to be the most torturous shit. Wow. Unless someone's weird. gay. It's weird. <laughs> then... Then those yeah, are victories. It's super then easy. They're, then they're just it's yeah. like you got to watch two hours of porn and wear jizz socks. Yeah. Where do I sign up? <laughs> that, it's it's completely like that. Shit. We, that's why we need more gay listeners. If the gay mafia is here, please check out PunchDrunkSports.com. I love that. That's great. Uh, normally, our patriot has a question for our guests. What do you got for us tonight, Scott? Uh, well, my first question's for Kurt. Yes, go ahead. Trust yourself. Just believe in it and stand tall. Go ahead. <laughs> You're slouching, just... I got a bum knee, never mind. Uh, Uh, Was that your question? No, no. Hey, uh, so I I saw that you were from San Diego. Yes, Uh, I am. Good start. I know uh, some of your filmography. I'm the Patriot, but you were in The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Good point, good point. You're also... Now uh, wrap it up. Bring up... Shore is dead, and also Parks and Recreation, of course. But my question for you is, Kirk, uh, where do you shop for pants? Uh, I don't shop for them. They just they usually just end up somehow in my closet. I've never bought a pair of pants. <laughs> Wait a second. Do guys leave them over? What the fuck? <laughs> guys, girls, I can fit into just about anything. But, <laughs> but I'm just telling you, I don't shop, but I, I have a lot of pants. I've been accumulating Are you just them. mugging tall people and stealing their pants? They just end up, man. These pants, I, I do not know where they came from. Are those the pants you wore in Tombstone? These may be from Wyatt Earp. So I get a, I get a lot of shit from uh, the prop department. Wonderful. So Wonderful. Was that the answer you needed? I mean, I guess so. I'm, I'm looking for pants. Uh... Come, come to my place. you got to watch two hours of porn, and then you leave in pants. You don't have any rags by any chance. You're going to. If you leave in these pants, you will. Does it, does it upset you you have to shop? They put big and tall. Well, first of all, nothing fat. upsets me. Really? Yeah. Nothing upsets you? I'm at, at peace. All. Nothing. Okay. But you can ask. You doing the water? But, you but don't stop your question. Water. This does not upset you. No, it just it sucks because you're a tall guy and you gotta shop where fat fuck shop. Is that upsetting to you? Oh, yeah, no, but I told you tall. I don't really shop. Ne- ever. I don't think I've ever really bought anything. Where does he, where the, you mean that that the same thing with your pants happens with your shirts Everything. and your glasses? Yeah, these I got from doing the test. 
They just give me shit. I'm not going to go out and buy stuff when it seems to appear magically. God, God. You, are, you are like a real-life superhero. Yeah. Listen, I worked hard to get where I'm not. <laughs> are they running your show in, like, third-world countries right now? Uh, uh, yes, the, the test. We're, in fourth, we're, in, we're starting fourth-world countries, yeah. and, and uh, we'll work up to the third. Nice. I love it. We're in uh, Uganda right now. Oh, that's a good place to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Patriot, what's your question uh, for Sam? Well, Sam, um, I know you, you have the uh, Naughty Show, and Tony already mentioned Punch Drunk uh, Sports, but I was wondering, what's your favorite cup size for fake tits? Uh, whichever's in my hand at that point, pretty much. I like them all. I, I always like to go. I have a Victoria's Secret near my house, so sometimes I'll hang out. By the uh, 34 double Ds, uh, just hang out and see mystical beasts come by and just check out unicorns. But that's about it. I don't know. I'm more of a face and ass guy. I could care less really what about, about fake tits. asses. I like fat, sloppy asses. You do? I do, dude. Yeah. I like big. Why do you fat. think that is? Well, how was your mom built? No, you know what? It, that's a great no, question. I'm just talking My mom's psychology. Tiny. I just grew up. I think you're attracted to women who. Are from your like your look of your area in a weird way. You might like it kind of cleaned up, but I I just grew up again around fat chicks, man. <laughs> I, I, I mean I don't like I don't like out of shape, man. But I like thi- I mean like dude all day every day. Now what what city was shit. that? Is there just a fat city? Yeah, it's just upstate New York, and it's just fat fucks. Water they're super fat. Or super skinny from doing meth. Those are there's no in fucking between. It's one or the other, man. And I just grew up. You know, I was thinking this is a rant. This is not even about fat chicks. I was thinking the other day. I have been eating ass since 1985. Wow. I did the math. I ate ass in first grade. This little French Canadian girl lived down the street. We were both fucking shady. And I just, I, I was like Christopher Columbus of ass eating. I went exploring. I got lost. Found paradise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I fucking That's love That's a true that. story, man. 85. I was one year old yeah. and you were eating ass. Of course it's true. That's not a story you make up. Yeah. Who brags about that? How old were you? Uh, I was in first grade. First grade, you were eating ass. That, that's did you think God you were God's God's truth? Did you think you were supposed to? You know, it's just like it's just like did someone say, "Hey, if you're with the girl, eat ass." You know what I'm ass. saying? It's like, you, do you teach a lion to hunt? You just <laughs> you know you they just do you just what knew. comes naturally. Oh, oh yeah, Sam, that's really young to be that sexually active. That usually comes from being molested. Who molested you? In I your would family? tell you if there was. I wish somebody had molested. What are you talking about? He's the molester. He's yeah. eating six no, year old no, no. ass. The still girls time. down the street were the real molest. They were very active. They probably well, had some. Well, of course, some shit once, go down. once word got out in the girls' restroom, that little Sam Tripley's <laughs> eating ass down the street. Of course, they're going to. They, come st- and they stopped you. wiping yeah. in his school. I loved it. I, 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 I just champion. I love that. Fuck and, yeah. and have you continued to this day? It is one of my thrills. So I you're, just, probably, I you're probably you're probably really good at it. Ass is on Sam's uh, food pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't it's use just that. underneath That's grains. That's in my food period. My food groups. There's fi- there's five <laughs> major food groups vegetables, life. <laughs> meats, big <and> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Not even in that I was just order. In San Diego, doing La Jolla. Oh, there's ass just, in San Diego. No, but they don't like even talking about ass eating. I would be crushing, and then I just drop, just start being honest on stage. And here's what I learned about comedy: people want you to get honest until you start getting honest. That's what they want. What people <laughs> really want is you to talk about shit we all already agree upon. That's what we like. That's what. But once you start talking about how you've been eating ass since '85, everyone gets weird the fuck out. Yeah. Yes. Well, La Jolla is a country club town. But it's like, it's rich people. It's like rich people, they get bored, they got money, and they pay poor people to, to do eat weird their shit. Ass. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. It's interesting. It's so, interesting so theory. You, did you lose, like, a lot of your act? No, dude. Did I you just cut out 20 dude, minutes I, of I ass do, eating? I do me the whole time. You can either enjoy it or you can just be like, fuck, we spent 25 bucks on this. You know, I just I just do me. I'm not going to change it. If you I were, know I'm crushing. If, if you were flexible enough to eat your own ass, would you do it? No, that's one do you thing. love eating ass that much to where I you I don't eat like your getting ass? my ass eaten just oh. because I'm Armenian and there's shrubbery. You know what I'm saying? I just... 
I don't. I would never want a girl to do that, you know. Fuck but see, yeah. girls don't just let you just eat their ass. They'll usually run to the bathroom, do that NASCAR power wash real quick, and get the fuck out. And then you, you know, you're working with. You're gonna find a special girl soon. Yeah. <laughs> there's the beauty is there's lots of special girls. That's the beauty. You You're probably find love one. a girl who's just bent over spreading her cheeks. That's gonna yeah, be. Yeah. What's first wrong kiss. with that? Like you guys don't like that? Like I'm an asshole. Now do you like a it a little bit more dirty than I normal? In America, I'm a dick. Do you, do you like it a little bit more dirty? Like, are you like craving homeless all the time? Or oh god, all right, guys. really? Uh, <laughs> this is the part where we start the show. Homeless. <laughs> now that all we've the met time. our uh, now that we've met our uh, How did awesome we get there? now that we've met our awesome guests, let's get the thing started. You guys know what it is. This craving is, uh, homeless all the time. Comedians go from doing a minute to material to it's being. Funny guests. how he could take that just a little too far. Yeah, like oh, Sam's yeah. focus on eating ass. It's like once you bring the homeless in it. Yeah, I'm sorry for being honest. This isn't funny. <laughs> This isn't funny anymore. Oh, fuck. Hey, this fuck. is the Bill Hicks of ass eating over here. Jesus. You? No, him. Oh, him? Go uh, for it. Guys. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Can I get my dates, by the way? When yeah. do we do dates? At the end. If you okay. want to do it now, go ahead. Yeah. Well, no. I got to figure Sam out my dates. Sam will be eating ass in Sacramento. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so true. So true. Um, so true. Comedians, you know how it works. If I'm blessed. You get 60 seconds on stage. You know that 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. <coughs> That's what it sounds like. You got to wrap it up then. This is Hollywood. Or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <coughs> It. <laughs> All right. The trolley stop. Um, that's what's going to happen. So please don't run the uh, please don't run the kitty sound. Get off then. So you guys know how it works. They go from being comedians to guests on a podcast when the sound of a kitty happens. Are you guys ready to do this? This is Kill Tony, episode seventy-five, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Your first comedian tonight. Goes by the name of oh we know her well. This is Sarah Kenny, everybody. Bottom to the top. Yeah, my mama she told me don't worry about yourself. Hey, did you guys know that in early humans, um, when people wanted to mate with each other, their genitals would start growling? Similar to the way your stomach growls when you're hungry. So like if a guy walked by that I wanted to mate with, mine would be like Rawr. You know, and then if he was into it, his would be like, ah. But that trait, <laughs> that trait died out really quickly because growling genitals are a huge turnoff. And they didn't make people want to procreate with each other. So thank you, natural selection, for that one. You know, and a lot of people like to say that dog is man's best friend. But I don't think that man is dog's best friend. Because I think dog's best friend is probably someone that doesn't cut his balls off and put him in a cage, <laughs> if I had to guess. Like, maybe a squirrel. Maybe a squirrel is dog's best friend. Because I don't think they would do that. They don't really have the resources, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Fuck yeah, there you go. Great. Sarah is that a minute? That's nice. Minute. Is that true? About the growling? No. What the fuck? Although, oh apparently, God. it's pretty believable. Oh, People my God. <laughs> Whoa. Is that true? <laughs> I didn't know. Like maybe that was some kind of that's what, what's that one bone that we don't know what it's for? Like it's uh, appendix or whatever. That, that it was our tail. Oh my god! <laughs> what was our tail? The oh. tail thing. Oh my, oh so I think the god. genitals just that's used to talk and then eventually Golf. realized they didn't need to. It's like <laughs> someone's gonna grab us whether I, uh, we speak or not. <laughs> You know what you never see? You never see chicks doing great sound effects, do you? You never see, like, the Pablo Francisco with a VJJ or anything like that. <laughs> That'd be great if she just died. They walk, pop, 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 pop. You'd be like, oh, my God, that girl can make sounds. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I think that'd be cool. Like, your, your sound effects were really horrible. And, uh, but it was, I guess the premise is funny. But I think if you just went crazier with it... Commit more to the... It was my first time trying to do something like that kind of sound effect thing. So, yeah, maybe I need to yeah. commit to it a little bit more. I'm, I mean, the, there is hope for that joke. There is. But I, but I, I got to tell you, when a joke starts off with something that is obviously not true, 
Well, it everybody did. but Red Band knows it's not true. Yeah. Well, no. It, 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 no if, it's that's totally your, if that's your target audience, then then you got you got a hit. On it totally hands. threw me off because you said it with like you, like it was, and now I'm like, wait, wait. It's called selling the bit, man. <laughs> he's not the first person to ask me that. Really? But yeah. But well, he's, well there's, fr- there's there's people like that. But it, I think the way to yeah. set it is you'd ha- if you said imagine if your genitals. Could speak much better. Like make it clear that it's just, fictional. Well, just make it clear that you know that genitals have never spoken. <laughs> because once, because once you say, you know, genitals used to speak. Everyone here except Red Band knows that dicks <laughs> don't talk. Yeah. They right. mumble. They they mumble. But Be- they Kurt, before language, what if the woman? didn't know how to communicate that she wanted to have sex, so she made, like, sucking in air noises. You know, they make, used to make What's clicky it? noises. <laughs> sucking in and air so noises. Yeah, that's <laughs> called Tiffany Haddish. Listen, I, was an anthropo- <laughs> I was an anthropology major. Let's not get into this right now. Back. I don't want to make you look any worse. I think Red Band's got a point here. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Red Band's I, got a point. What if, back before, you know, when they were cave women, what if they got horny and they didn't realize how to use their mouths yet, and they, but they instead... They queefed constantly. Well, they don't know how to use their mouths yet, <laughs> but they, somehow they, they got magical bring... snatch. Is right. that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she cola. If an ass could talk, you'd come running. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I'd be like, Marco, Polo, where are you? They actually probably did queef more because they were always squatting, building pots and stuff oh on my rocks. God. They weren't building <laughs> pots. <laughs> Red Band, you're like the guy that built the dinosaur Christian museum to try to make everything work. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, this is how it worked. Dinosaurs and Jesus were hanging out. We don't know for certain it didn't happen. Okay, you two should talk after the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just theory. saying that that joke might work if you set it up where a it's a little more. Well, you could be like, there's a, there's animals that use sounds, mating calls. What if we did that, but with our genitals? Right. And then you just started you're doing your wide range of fucking then, speaking then, spell sound then, effects then we'll with go your with pussy. You. We'll go with you on that if you set it up that it's a hypothetical. Yeah. Where do you think, uh, why do you think you want to talk about something like that? Like, if, that, if that's a made-up thing that you made up with your imagination, yeah. then well, what, I, what, what part of you, what part of you, do you, where do you think that comes from? What in your life? Well, I was thinking of a situation where my stomach had been growling really loudly, oh. and I thought, I, oh, that's embarrassing. Like, everybody around me can hear this. And then I thought, what if it was indicating something else that I definitely didn't want people to know? You Maybe know, she like, just like but that's how you, porn. That's, that's, that's how you should word it, you know? Yeah, yeah. If I think the other way where you just set up the hypothetical, it's funnier. And then the dog thing, it's like, you got to do a dog's best friend joke. You got to go somewhere no one's ever gone before. Right. Big time. Like, that is, I mean, like... It's just been done. Yeah. And I, you just got to go weird with that shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, dog's best friend is someone that would eat his asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Sam? Oh, what if that's her big a, bit that gets her on the Tonight Show? It might. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows every Tonight Show. I'm just uh, saying, it's, it's been yeah, done. Yeah, that's definitely, <laughs> definitely it's accepted. It's been done. I mean... The fun thing is when someone takes a premise that's been done and just spins it completely. You're like, yeah. holy fuck, that's a brand new take on that. Yeah. That's funny, you know? Uh, and it's a great premise if you got something different with it. Can you whistle to your dog with your vagina? <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> wow. Just r- going for it tonight, I guess. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much. That Sarah, was fun. Nice set. to meet you. She's on Twitter at S. Kenny Comedy, so you can follow and her. And when there. your stomach growls, just give it a little food. You'll be okay. Yeah. Yep. Stop starving yourself. You're pretty. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting one. Stomach growling's crazy. I find that women in this town are trying to look like gay boys. Anybody else knows that? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, women all this town want Tony Hinchcliffe's fucking physique. Hey, Every girl does damn that. right. And most have it. A lot most, of the guys want it. this physique, too. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that? That was a real chick, I think. Someone no, that was her vagina. <laughs> Maybe that was her vagina. Hell yeah. Look, that blonde girl right there who's as skinny as you are, you two fucked to start fire. Just two sticks. Oh, just rubbing. come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Scrawny no scrawny. We would not make a fire. You would need two of you to ride a roller coaster so when the, f- the hook comes oh, down, come there's enough on. of you. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. Wait, 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 do you have all these skinny jokes? Is that what you're doing when you're yeah. eight, getting second helpings of meatloaf? Yeah, yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Put your hands together for your next comedian. He goes by the name of Tam Fam. <laughs> Uh, by round of applause, who here looks at me and does not assume that I'm a terrible driver? Okay, good. So now we know where the liars are. Um, if, if you're not lying, thank you. And uh, for the rest of you racists, you're completely right. I'm a fucking death machine. <laughs> If you ever see my car, the murder mobile, you're, you're going to want to stay out of the way. Uh, it's a blue Hyundai accent, which I, which I learned a little too late is not the kind of accent that women are attracted to. Um, by the way, uh, my mom is an even worse driver than I am. Uh, she can't really help it. My mom is this terrifying combination of... Asian, old, female, nearsighted, immigrant. She's basically, she's basically the Captain Planet of moving violations. Amazing. Thank you. Tam Fan. Wow. Wow. Thunder and lightning. Yes. Holy shit. I like your style, Tam. You're Thank a cool you. dude. Thank you. You were on a couple weeks ago, right? Ah, uh, yeah. You crushed then, didn't you? Do so you have to stand like that because your dad made you? Like, it's, <laughs> like every Asian stands like that. Like, more green tea, more green tea, sir. <laughs> it is very proper. You have great posture. That was posture. a nice joke. I had other things I wanted to say. You have great posture. <laughs> you do have good posture, but you, are you nervous? A uh, little bit. Okay, now I got to tell you something as a friend. And I'm not just saying this because I like your shirt. (laughs) Your material is so good that you don't need to be nervous. You gotta try. You gotta trust. You gotta trust. You gotta trust what you have. So when you come up here, take a breath and enjoy the moment because you know that your material works. Yeah, it's very well written, man. It was very funny, very quick. You know, it's easy when you go with... The and you thing. can even slow it down a little. Yeah. You the opposite nervous. of the way you change lanes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Not all Asians are shitty drivers, actually. Most are. I, Most actually are. Saw, I, mean, I saw one the yeah, other day do like are in four rickshaws. lanes and hit nothing. Just like, <laughs> fuck it. Four this lanes. I was like, that guy's unbelievable. <laughs> what kind of Asian are you? Uh, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. I was just in China. I dead serious. No, no car crashes. None. You think it would just be demolition? Well, because derby. they're all connected. All their bumpers are already connected. So no, there's I, no more. There's no more accidents. I, in what, what is this? Human centipede of driving? Is that what you're talking about? No. I think it's just he's such a great driver <laughs> that we fuck you up. We're we're just below your ninja skills of driving. It's like playing basketball with Magic Johnson. His passes are so good, but we can't catch it. That's what it is. <laughs> Asians are such great drivers. White people fuck them up. That's what it is. Yeah. Magic Johnson. Do you believe is a that? Pass right. Um, like of everything but HIV doesn't. tests. What? Hey! Thank you. Where's the pony boy? Writers Guild. Um. Tam Fam. Do you come up here every time and do Asian jokes? Be honest. Every time you've done this. Uh, the first time I didn't know. Okay. Because no. uh, I'd like to see you do non-Asian jokes too. Because I, I think you crushed, but I think it's that's easy. Mm-hmm. I think that was well written, funny Asian material. That's very good stuff. I would like to see how you do not doing Asian. Yeah, do material. some black material. Yeah, do yeah. black. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, just think just it's mix easy. It up. Tam fam, uh, what scares you? What scares me? Uh, women blinkers. Really. <laughs> Why do women scare you? What about women scares you? You're on fire, Kirk. No, it's really everybody, uh, men and women. But <laughs> men women and women? That, yeah, women are the ones I what care about. What are you, about. insecure Rob Lowe? What is this? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I understand that reference. It was a no one does. <laughs> there you go. You don't have to be from Vietnam to not get a lot of that. Um, why, what, what makes you nervous about girls? 
Uh, I'm just not good with people, period. And, and okay. girls are the ones whose opinions I care about. Okay. So let me tell you something. So this is what you should talk about also. Yep. How, you know, you don't know what you are. But what you do know is that you don't like people. <laughs> See how funny that was? Like you're almost like Pinky the Brain almost. You're just like this guy on world domination. I just You know, the truth is, you'd like to sit in your seat and have the room turn around toward you. you see how confusing that was? <laughs> Damn. This Her is like Fox giving away Jedi secrets yeah. though. It's like the, show. the test world tour we're going on right now. By the end of this the show, we'll everybody right in the room we'll is right gonna know back. how to do stand up, and I like that. Uh, no, but just tr- trust you're enough, and then you'll find out what you like. Yeah, dude, just... But start off by liking yourself first. Yeah, dude, might as well, well like be yourself. Right yeah, you're, you're, al- you're already you know, wearing your own T-shirt. Yeah, dude. Or is yeah. that even yours? <laughs> uh, yeah, I found it at a Goodwill. It's a weird coincidence. How That's many a good start. Uh, How many of those do you have? Uh, just the one. Just That's the all one. you need. Yeah. You're funny, dude. You need yeah. to start accepting that. And, you know, Have you been really doing a lot of spots other places? Now, if I remember correctly, you worked the same job for a long time. You saved up, and you just quit a couple months ago and have just been doing stand-up, right? Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I get up four, three or four times a week. Um, I, I do gotta a, hustle more. Yeah. You gotta oh, go. I go when I more. was here, dude, when I first moved here, I was hustling every night. I was getting up in L.A. three times a night, and that's not an exaggeration. I would run fucking He'd everywhere. He'd stop eating ass to go do comedy. <laughs> I mean, that's how important I, comedy I, I was. I suddenly regret to being young honest Sam with Tripoli. this crowd. Uh, but you, can, you should... Now, do you, you have a car, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you have a car. You should be running everywhere. You should be trying to get up anywhere. I go, go. Ha ha cafe every day. Ha ha. Go fucking beyond Pinko, dude. Don't be afraid, dude. Go over there. There's not a lot of Asians that way. You go that way, dude. There's about a bunch of comedy clubs. Just go over there and try to get up as much as you can because you're really funny. But when you can't get up, talk to your friends. Just start talking to people because I know you don't. Yeah. You know? You're right. You're right. And you'll, you'll, you're right. you'll be amazed at what you'll learn. Yeah. You'll, you'll say something to someone and they'll smile and then. You say that to 50 people, and at least 30 will laugh. You should strike out with a, three people a day. Your job should be the... Call me tomorrow, and, talk and we'll just day. talk for a minute. Yeah. You're amazing. And Tam I'll tell Tam. you where I'll be driving, and don't go anywhere near me. <laughs> Tam I think, Fam, uh, everybody. Kurt Fox trusty sidekick. Great. I think you have a trusty sidekick. I like yeah. him. He's my Kato. He's, He's my Kato in the Pink Panther. <laughs> He'll come out of my fucking closet when I get home. <laughs> Is he the guy that buys all your pants? He might be. <laughs> or hopefully he'll be able to you. sew a few. He makes them. That's right. Tam Pham. Not the first time a Vietnamese guy is killed in a room of a bunch of Americans, but... Uh, That's true. Oh. See what I did there? What's amazing is he's been gone for 20 minutes. Yeah. He's back there behind no, the No, he's gone. He dug his way up. <laughs> We know this guy. Uh, this I is see you laughing. USC brain surgery student who's been on a few times uh, for neurosurgery to comedy. Here he is, Ori Amir. Hey. So uh, I like uh, using women uh, <laughs> for relationships. <laughs> see what I'm... When I meet a girl I like, I pretend I'm like this chauvinist asshole who only wants to sleep with her. But then, after we have sex and I like have her where I want her, I'm like giving her a massage and I'm treating her very nicely. And before she knows it, BAM! She's in a relationship! (laughs) Oh yeah, you love me? Oh yeah, you love me? Well, I love you too! Last time I did that, I scored a five-year relationship. Are you... What? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You just accidentally killed. That's what just happened. 
It's the faces. It's the faces. Making face. I don't know. I like your. I like I, his is style. he a brain surgeon? Well, he's no. Uh, you're a brain patient. <laughs> <laughs> you're like I've, I've participated in many of my own experiments. You're, so you, I know. you had the vibe of Dane Cook with Down syndrome. Has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> you're like if he fucking his mom drank during the pregnancy. That's the vibe I'm getting. I'm sorry. No, you're funny, dude. It's just weird shit. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, intentionally weird, yeah. yeah I get yeah. it. But let me tell you something. I like you a lot. Oh. And the reason is because you believe in what you're selling. <laughs> and it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, but what I'm saying, but you believe in it so much. That you're selling it, and these people are eating that shit right up. <laughs> but that's America. Now, where I are you from? I could see it getting Israel. big. Israel? Yeah. I could see it getting big. I could really see, when you master it, it getting really big. No, do big. not master it. <laughs> no. Keep it right. Do not it. fucking change what you're doing. The fact you're, that none of the words connect and like... <laughs> and it, no, and it appears like mm. you're hearing them for the first time. It's fucking... <laughs> it's amazing. It makes sense if you think about it, but... No, yeah. it doesn't, but that's what's amazing. <laughs> if it made sense, we wouldn't be laughing. <laughs> I wouldn't... He's I, if, staring at you if, like he's in love. No, he, w- he should be. Do me a favor <laughs> and just walk <laughs> away now. <laughs> Don't overthink anything we've said, but just continue exactly what you're doing. <laughs> That's it. Mm-hmm. Just go. <laughs> there you go. Ori Amir. Go. <laughs> Goodbye. Right, bye. Amazing. Don't You're great, right, dude. You're very funny. Comes I'm going to fucking write a sitcom for you and the Vietnamese assassin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a show. That's a YouTube no show. No shit. Totally. YouTube. That's fucking NBC. Israeli, Vietnamese, crushing pussy. This Thursday on NBC, it's Ori and Tam Fam. What happens when the Vietnamese I mean, I don't shy know, guy I don't meets know the anything p- he said, but it was so interesting. Can someone tell me what he said? Anybody know, you know what he, he had he's a relationship about? because... I, I, in that relationship, you robot, with your father, do you know? and then you go, I love you, and then she are like, I love you. I just was waiting for him to go, and wild then, and crazy guy! <laughs> and then five years later, she's still with me. <laughs> Well, yes, was, she is. Why now, would w- she leave a w- fucking money? Was maker? he raping? <laughs> was, was, now we're, he's gonna. We're gonna get in a car accident at some point in the next. Yeah, uh, he, he was in, in one on years, the way here, and he's gonna be the last thing that we see before we go Look, under anesthesia. You should. I, ho- I, I, I hope he is the last thing I see. Yeah. I'm going out happy. I love you. Fucking. And then you're just like whoa. That's the What's great is you see. will never see anyone imitate him. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry about people stealing your jokes, bro. You're good to go. Yeah. When, I, you, when you don't have jokes, it's a good thing that they yeah. can't steal. The punchlines are at the beginning, and then he's... Was he raping a girl? <laughs> Fuck it. No. He was loving a girl. <laughs> that that he's like, I didn't put her down on the bed, and then I put my peanuts in her, and he, she loved me. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, dude, he wasn't dirty like you. <laughs> he no, was so clean. He, he made was love. a translator. Can you translate what he said? Don't. I don't want to fucking know. Don't ruin this. <laughs> fuck. That's confused. a brain surgeon. He got into our heads and fucking took out our cerebellum. Yeah. <laughs> He really That's did. science right there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Let's keep this fun train moving along. Who knows what can possibly happen next? Ah, oh, this is a former employee of the comedy store, which is a very tough position to get. Uh, it's even harder to lose. And very right. coveted as well. Very, very coveted. Former. A lot of the greats have worked here. Uh, David Letterman, Jim Carrey, Sam Kennison. I used to work here. I used to work ago. here. You did? I've never yeah. worked anywhere. Wow. That's I so used cool. to work the door... Well, back when I got picked up, Mitzi picked up a whole bunch of us. She's like, "You're gonna, you're gonna be a regular, but you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta work the door." So I would actually work the the back room, have my T-shirt on. Go, and I used to love to go up on stage in my employee T-shirt yeah. and just flame throw the room, yeah. and then bring somebody up and just watch them eat a dog stick yeah. on stage. It yeah. just was like such an empowering That's thing. Great, man. Yeah. It really is. It's like wearing a Yankees jersey. It really and was a home run. Uh, and somehow he just got fired a couple weeks ago. 
Put your hands together for him. It's Carlos De Jesus. Carlos De Jesus. Hi. So uh, I used to break dance. Yeah, that was a thing I did. Yeah, I was legit too. I had a crew and everything. It consisted of me, a black and Filipino dude from Long Beach, a tall Filipino, a short Filipino, a white guy who would wear a do rag because he thought he'd bring him waves, and like four other Filipinos. That was that was my crew. It, like every time we walked into a club, it looked like we just like the kitchen staff of a Chinese restaurant just got off shift. That's pretty much what it looked like. Um, all right, that's cool. That's cool. I was pretty good. I lost to a 12-year-old once, though. That was embarrassing. I had a lot of Asian friends, and then I just stopped breakdancing because of that fucking 12-year-old kid. Fuck that kid. He ruined my life, guys. I could have been a professional. Um, This is going worse than his. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I'm done. Well, I mean, what do you you mean by worse than his? Ori Amir destroyed him here. I mean... You got buried <laughs> by an Israeli, bro. <laughs> Why Holy did you shit. say all Are the you Palestinian sizes for? Dude? Why did you say all the sizes for? But then yeah. it had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, well, I, I know we're not. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what the crew consisted of. That was pretty much it. But, you could cut but all it doesn't that out, mean right? anything. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. You're right. You could just. Oh, you want to go? Go. For no, it. go ahead. You could just be like, dude, I was on a Filipino breakdancing group. Boom! You've just stated everything you need right. to know. Right. Yeah. What's funny about you being in the Filipino dance crew? Well, What's I figured I figured because uh, the fact that I guess the punchline was say it in a line, one line. What is funny about you being in a Filipino dance crew? That we look like a Chinese food kitchen staff that just got off shift. There you go. That was your biggest laugh of the whole thing. You yeah. got there in two lines. Okay. Bam. Okay. Uh, I see what you're saying. And and also this, when when a joke doesn't work, it's done. Right. You held on to that and you tanked your next three jokes because you were still pissed that the first one didn't get a laugh. Dude. And if you're in that moment and, and your first joke doesn't get a laugh, pretend it's the setup. All right. Yeah. And just move on. They don't know that they're not supposed to laugh. They only know that because you're like, oh, that sucked. They didn't know the joke was fucking over. Okay. Okay. So why tip it? Just keep going. Plow through this shit. Yeah. It's true. K- killing an audience is a, 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 a trait that is just as important as bombing eloquently. Yeah. And when you can bomb and pe- have people be like, wow, I liked that so guy. So your first 20 seconds could have just been a setup or a hello. Right. Just because they didn't laugh. But you tanked the next, you know. Yeah, The next three jokes, you were still bitching about the first one. You can't get fired twice. That's the best part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not gonna fire you twice. You're done, dude. Now it's just now you're just playing with house money at this point. Right. You should just have fun. There's no. I felt you felt pressure. Why were there so many Filipinos around you? Where were you raised? <laughs> I was in Colorado Springs at the time. And why wasn't it a Filipino restaurant? Um. It was. It was. Why? Why? I was mean, it you a, say all these Filipinos, and then you walk out of a Chinese restaurant. Because I've never really seen Chinese people work at a Chinese restaurant. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just asking you. Don't uh, fucking just, challenge me. I'll I just thought you it was. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, he's totally there. right. There's, there's much better things you could go with. Right, like a right. Dry cleaning. Co- I mean, like, I wasn't it's challenging. Like, you. I just didn't. No, know. I'll see you in hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let this go. You've never seen Chinese people working in a Chinese restaurant? Yeah, I guess yeah, that I don't doesn't go to What the fuck sense. is going on? Well, but it's <laughs> like, find out. It's find obviously out we're never Fili- been to a Chinese you know, Filipinos. restaurant. You got five Filipinos. Right. You know, there's got to be something five Filipinos do together. Right. You looked at, when you, when you, you went, besides lose what, fucking what, what, what did you say before when you go into a club, you said? Yeah, when we go into a club, we look like a Chinese restaurant. So it's restaurant. probably something like when you go into a club, it looked like uh, Manny Pacquiao and his team coming out for a boxing match, and you would be the Freddie Roach. If you ever do it, <laughs> yeah. see, now his didn't work. With but in his mind, thing. he yeah. believes it did. Right? Yeah. Just like that, and he's going to plow through it. He I'm sold a it. Blooded killer. You need to work on eight different fucking tags and find which one works. Okay. And just do it enough that you'll find the one that works. It's like I just remember, if someone doesn't laugh, they don't know that they were supposed to, unless you tell them, "Oh fuck, that wasn't funny." Right. By the then way, they'll be like, "Oh shit, we didn't even know that." 
And you're on a great path. I mean, your idea of what you're talking about is great. You know what I mean? That's honest. It's self-deprecating. It's silly. And it's a funny premise that you have. Chicks love breakdancers. But you got to tell us the truth in some of that. Like, again, I I still don't know. Where was this at? And how old were you? 22 in Colorado Springs. Yeah. And did you have... What were their funny... I mean, what are Filipino breakdancers street names? I mean, it's like... What right. the fuck are Filipinos doing in Colorado Springs? Yeah. Yeah. I was in the military. There's a whole bunch of those. Find who out. Was your, who was Find your out rivals? what the fuck. Say what? Who who who's the rival gang? I mean, Tam Fam and the Vietnamese spinners. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, if you had the hottest breakdancing band in Colorado Springs, fucking, you're onto something. You have to go, and I know we're supposed to, like, right. but the truth is, you have to decide what is the funny in what you're saying. Right. Why were you breakdancing Holy shit. Oh, hi. What yeah. the fuck is that? That's a great question, too. Hi. Everybody usually gives that dream up about 11 years old. You kept well, going. <laughs> I mean, I quit at 21, and I fucked up. Because yeah. who knew the next year was when I'd really get into my spin? That's... <laughs> What was your, uh, what's your big move? Like, uh, have you done it since you were 22? Uh, I did it for about like four to five years, and then I you went started to comedy. Is that why you quit the comedy store to get back to breakdancing? <laughs> 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 have you done it I'm going to finish my fucking dream, uh, Mom. Have you ever, have you ever breakdanced on a live podcast? We're getting podcast? the Filipino have, gang back together. A, Carlos, have will you, ever, you dance for us? Have you ever, have you ever breakdanced on a live podcast after bombing for a minute straight before? <laughs> well, I can't say that I ever have. No, so no, never. Do it. Do it now. Would you guys like to see that? Do it, dude. Yeah. Put some music for us. Ladies and gentlemen, here, put the mic. Uh, where's Josh? Put the mic in front of you. Take the stool off. <laughs> First, first ever in podcast history, breakdance. Won't play the best over audio, so I yeah, hope you, you guys have, enjoy it. Do you have some it. Filipino music? <laughs> yeah, is there a specific song that you want, Carlos? Oh, he's, he's, re- down, he's relacing his shoes. By the way, the general manager of the club's in the back of the room. I just got word that if this is awesome, then you are rehired here at the comedy store. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. It's your time. Oh, uh, this is Egan. Bo- oh. <laughs> what? That was amazing. <laughs> Can we see some top rocking, dude? Oh, he some lost top his glasses. Rocking? Here, give us your glasses. Top rock. Well, you're oh. dancing. You don't have to see. It's perfect. Look, and that makes it exciting. Blind. Feel the beat, A blind dude. break dancer? Fucking, that should have been your angle. <laughs> There's, <laughs> There's your hook. This is the first ever break dance in podcast history. <laughs> Believe in yourself. <laughs> Yeah. yeah! You bombed for a minute straight and then you totally redeem yourself. Let's hear, your, let's hear your breathing real quick. Oh man. Alright, at least now you have your opener. <laughs> you come out breakdancing, we're gonna believe that fucking Filipino angle. That's right. Carlos. Ladies, great and, ladies and gentlemen, Carlos de Jesus. Wow. That was amazing. Podcast history. I love that he... How wa- come you couldn't park cars that fast? <laughs> You'd still be working here. He did something during that that I've only ever seen like in break dancing, which is uh, the per- whoever's like doing it, he gave Brian a look after Brian played the song. He gave Brian a look like, oh, that's the song you're going to play? <laughs> and then they always hold that look as they like go into the first move. It's a weird break, dude. Yeah, and when he it's finished, go- the instinct the- was he looked at me like it was my turn. Yeah. <laughs> you go. What's the first rule of break dancing? Yes, and. There you go. Wait yeah. a second. Weren't you on a break dance? Yes. All right, right guys. Give it up for no. Sam. Ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. Oh, my no. God. You have Fuck to. Fuck. No, we the, don't have insurance. No. Have, no. Sam no. Tripoli and the no. Ass no. Eaters this from Colorado shit. Springs. This shit. <laughs> We were we were called the this is true story we were uh, called the HEI breakers and we were we were uh, sponsored by the Holiday Inn true story and and I, Be- why is that because you guys were so sweet yeah <laughs> oh fuck keep going 
<laughs> no, dude, that's just the truth. Yeah. Really? Holiday Inn breakdancing. Yeah. They gave teams? us fucking tr- breakdancing tracksuits. It was great. Wow. We played the Maple Leaf Festival. Oh, Shit I, was real. That w- I did see you guys there. Yeah. Was it? Were, are you? Are you sure? It wasn't Ho- Holiday Inn Express where <laughs> even you can break That's dance? Even better. <laughs> Anybody can break dance. I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Uh, that was Carlos De Jesus. He's on Twitter at zombie underscore sharks. So if you're wondering who is zombie underscore sharks on Twitter, it's the break dancing comedian Carlos. Was De Carlos De, De-, De Jesus already taken? Okay. Wow, didn't even look. You didn't even look up your yeah, own name. Dude, you got to believe like in it's yourself. marketing, bro. Start with your own name yeah. before you venture to one they that no one will click on. Side accounts. I got your back. Call me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I got three guys. I'm managing now. You know what? That brings me to a question that I wanted to ask you guys. What's the uh, what's the worst bombing you ever had on stage? Cool. Oh man. <laughs> Friday night. No. <laughs> What happened? Uh, do you want to go to yours? No, I love yours. You don't know mine. Well, let me pick one that I've seen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No. He's on fire great. today. You guys are great. You're on fire today. Uh, speed no speed. You're fast, my friend. Um, I bombed in front of the entire cast of the Wedding Crashers. Whoa. I was doing a uh, very special sh- It was I've gotten sober a bunch of times. This was the first time that I got sober for like five years after this gig. I literally oh got sobered God. after this. It was... Uh, I heard this. Yeah, I, uh, I, we had gone to... It was just after 9-11. Oh. And uh, Vince Vaughn was like, I'm going to put together a show for the troops. Can I bring out a bunch of people? I'm like, fuck yeah. They brought me, Ahmed Ahmed, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco, and Brett Ernst. And uh, it's literally a month after 9 11. Mm-hmm. Ahmed Ahmed walks out. Whoa. When and you say 9 11, you're talking about the release of Wedding Crashers? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Blu ray? Oh, nothing. And direct okay. download? <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. Good so he goes out, movie. he bombs. Ahmed bombs that night. And it wasn't his fault. They just didn't want to see a guy like that telling jokes. <laughs> Sebastian goes out. He does well. It's still a rough crowd. I walk out, and dude. Here's the thing about this show. Vince Vaughn had set up this gig, and it was literally like first come, first serve. Whoever got tickets got to come to the, whoever came to the bar and got in first, got in. And it, the doors opened at noon. The show was until eight at night. The bar was packed at noon. Fucking full pack. Yeah, everybody's drowned. I walk out and I start doing this joke, and this fucking little scrawny bitch is in the front. is like, get the I go, lady, I'm just trying to help the truth. Fuck you, you suck. I go, why don't you go, you go fuck one of your cousins, get out of here. Turns out she's with all of her cousins. You know what I'm saying? Uh. It's literally like 50 deep of fucking cousins. This is like, this is the family tree. This is a forest of people. And it just went bad fast. And uh, I sa- they started shouting, sha na 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 Oh, no. Na, na, na. So to this day, anytime I hear that, I'm like, oh. Uh. <laughs> this is how great it is. Some girl in the crowd felt so bad for me, she fucked me in the tour bus right after. She, wow. Yeah. She's like, I can't believe they did that to you. And we just went and fucked in the tour bus. So, so you ate ass on stage. No, and I did And then you went and ate her no, ass I didn't. on the tour bus. No, I didn't. I didn't eat ass on stage. I did that at the Key Club, and I got banned for a year. That's a totally different story. Wow, really? No, yeah. That's a whole different story. I was. It was wow. another time where I got Jesus. sober after do that we have one time? Do we have no. time for all his bombings? No. By, the way, you, by the way, you can catch the rest of Sam's bombings. It's a two p- <laughs> But two the funny series. part of this bomb, and this is the truth, I'm sitting in the green room, and Owen Smith is like, it's okay, buddy, it's okay. It's all right. It's all can right. we cut and paste it in? More but, on Sam's bombings. We call them, it's, a, it's like a Kill Bill. You had to split it into two parts. Four hours. What was, Owen, what was Owen Wilson saying? He's just like trying to be nice. He's like, it's okay, buddy. It's He's right. talking to you with his crooked nose. And like, dude, all you say is like, my God, that nose is huge. And yeah. it's just all it's a, you can focus on. is, It's like yeah. it, the, the, the physics of that nose makes no sense. You can't uh-huh. compute how it all works. Yeah. I don't think he smelled anything. And yet it does. It's like the fucking brain surgeon. Yeah. 
you just don't know how it works. But yet. I think my story of bombing just bombed. I think that's what just <laughs> happened right there. Kirk, your worst bombing ever. I think. Well, I would say with Charlie Sheen. Oh, yes. I forgot yeah. because about I, that. I didn't. I did not forget. Right. <laughs> Never forget. There but was 5,000 people booing me for 20 straight minutes. Back, <laughs> back story, if you don't know. Char- when Charlie Sheen started the first show in Detroit, correct? Yes, of the sir. Torpedo of Truth tour, which he started when he was at Maximum Insanity. So obviously his fans were at Maximum Insanity. They uh, wanted Charlie. I don't think they wanted me. you were the opener. I was the opener. Holy and they shit. And they were supposed to just kind of say, uh, they were just kind of to bring me out from the side curtain mm-hmm. so that I'd kind of be the host and then do, you know, 20 minutes of comedy. But Ooh. instead of introducing me from behind the curtain, some guy just went out on stage and just said, are you ready to rock? Oh. Are you ready for Charlie Sheen, motherfucker? Oh. And 5,000 people were just like, fuck yeah. And he's like, but first. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know how many hookers he's been with or if he smokes crack, but keep it going for Kirk Fox. And it just went, Phew. Oh. So wow. I went out there and just started, and they started booing Immediately, but yeah. I just believed in my shit. Yeah. And at one point, there was only 3,000 booing. Yeah. And I said, listen, I want all of you. Yeah. Unite. <laughs> Come together. Wow. And then soon they were all booing me. And then wow. Charlie came out at 10 minutes and just like put his arm around me and said, come on, you know, he's my friend. And then he gave me a Snickers bar and then walked off stage. And they were like, oh, fuck, because they saw Charlie. Yeah. So then they booed even louder. Oh, my oh, God. God. Jesus. <laughs> Holy but then shit. The, the joke was afterwards, you know, I, there was a lot of press. And they were like, you know, you know I, I heard you got, you know, booed off stage. And I'm like, no, off stage, everyone was nice. <laughs> you know, I got booed on stage. <laughs> you know. So there it is. That's hilarious. I See po- how my booing story just fucking killed? <laughs> <laughs> I was just specific. Oh, I tied God. it in. Oh, I personalized God. it. And, you know, All I didn't. Right, man. It's your day, bud. It's your I, day. I, I pulled the next name out of the bucket. She goes by the name of Melanie Baldonado. You never knew what you left to do. Here she comes. It's a long walk from the back of the room for you listeners. Oh, but it looks like it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did we miss something? Give it up for Melanie Baldonado. Melanie Baldonado, everybody. Uh, my girlfriends have been quoting Steve Harvey for relationship advice. Which I think is completely ridiculous. Why would you quote somebody for relationship advice who you would never have sex with? Steve Harvey's suits can't decide between pimp and uh, preacher. Steve, come on, you guys, Steve Harvey, sincerely, Steve Harvey. Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Steve Harvey says that you should wait 90 days before you have sex with anybody. Just because it takes Steve Harvey 90 days to seal the deal doesn't mean that the rest of us should have to suffer. <laughs> oh, I have more time. I, uh, this is what I figure. Guys think of themselves, their own minds for relationship advice, and then their friends, right? So I try to see, like, maybe Steve Harvey has hot friends. So I Googled Steve Harvey, okay? Pages and pages and pages of images of Steve Harvey by himself. Steve Harvey hangs out with Steve Harvey. It's such I, a reach. It's like it's like you, you would need this would ne- you would need to perform it in front of an audience of people that only. I disagree, wa- man. No, Steve Harvey. I no. disagree. I mean, I you have to funny. give them a better reference of that. Like, I've oh, done wait, shows where it's like, hey, I do a joke about TED Talks, and sometimes the crowd has no fucking clue what TED Talks is. So you gotta explain it. But I think that's very funny. Your premise. I think you just gotta go harder at Steve yeah, Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. You, yeah. You gotta really light that motherfucker up yeah. to make this okay. premise they, they, fucking they, work. I agree. They gotta believe that you care about it. You well, need to remind people of how they yeah, know but, him but too. I know yeah. you do, but you gotta just at least tell your voice 
to believe it. We're talking, we're talking okay. about the Steve Harvey that hosts the Family Feud. Yeah, the Steve Harvey has his own talk show that I guess right. people watch, but I, I, I actually watch, watch it. It's one of those. Uh, <laughs> you watch it? Yeah. <laughs> That makes it sense. is so awesome to smoke a lot of weed and watch Steve Harvey, and sometimes he makes some great points. Like, like I, I, I'm, I'm on board with Steve Harvey. I'm sorry, I follow I that deal. If Steve, <laughs> all right, no. dating advice? No. No, 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 no. Like, there's so much shit that that's obviously. Did Steve Harvey oh, help you with that homeless what? angle? No. That oh means my nothing. So He's got what? money. Exactly. That means fucking nothing. No, no. Th- there's, there's some bullshit. Like Hot chicks fuck retards all the time. It happens. <laughs> I, I can... White robot, I can, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, if robot. Steve Harvey whispered in my ear, I would throw up. Yeah. He's like the, one of the most unattractive people I've ever seen in my life. Steve Harvey? Steve Harvey is like so unlike. Yeah, I just you can't nice go guy. long. Yeah, but not. you see this passion? <laughs> Man, you yeah. really you see love that? Steve Harvey. What's but that's Steve how Harvey? you should be attacking the joke the way you're talking about him now. Right. That's that's all we're saying. Yeah. The family feud guy, you just go but, off on, on that. That you have to pound this guy and how ridiculous this dude is giving away dating advice. You're just right. jealous. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you love Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Be honest, did, did he hurt what, you? What is Steve Harvey no, fans it's just, called? It's just that when your girlfriends are quoting people and you're like, oh yeah, like who said that? Like that somebody said to wait 90 days to have sex. You're counting the days to have sex. Who said that? Steve Harvey. It's like, are you freaking kidding me? Listen, you're listening. He wrote a book. If you're, he wrote a book. It's the on dumbest thing ever. Advice. How it's old is he? Thing. I don't know. 68. 90? He was born in October 13th. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look who, I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> I can. I never would have guessed your love of look, Steve Harvey. Look, Steve Harvey has problems. Like I wouldn't, like 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 follow his relationship advice. But he, you have a very strong hatred just on this relationship. No, so you yeah. like sleeping with guys like fast. That's your thing. That's because you're. you're, you're oh, no. <laughs> and, and thank it you happens. for that. Thank it you happens. for that. And you feel bad about this? I no. don't actually. I and don't. You shouldn't. I don't feel bad about it. No, not at all. It's not like all the time you sleep with the guy fast, but I'm not going to like click on the calendar and be like, you have to wait 90 days. It's yeah, like, dude, so what's are your, what's you sexy? Your, are you cool? Fuck Do first, you like ask me? questions later. Yeah, That's what I, I mean, said. 90 days is ridiculous. Like two days? No, nah, I mean, it all depends. Like The guy has to like 90 me. 90 minutes is sometimes. Yeah. How about yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Are we We're do attracted this to each other. Let's see if we want to hang out afterwards. That's what I say. It's just the truth, man. Now you can. <laughs> I mean, after 90 work. minutes, if you're not eating ass, yeah. fuck it, it's going yeah. nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't put ass in a doggy we bag a and save together? it for later. I think you're right. I think we you write a pop that up, down just like, a pop-up book. Why is a 60-year-old black man telling women how, who they should date? Because he gets tons of fucking money. And he's playing a character almost. He's just getting checks and checks and checks. And he's going, oh, yeah, I should sell to this certain group in the middle. Oh, you yeah, love religious guys. It's, I, it's I think Steve Harvey is actually pretty amazing. When you look at what he does on the Family Feud, uh, <laughs> by the way, no, I'm serious. By that the way. sentence has never been said in the history. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, he's I'm, pretty amazing. Look what he does on the Family Feud. I'm you just fucking serious. said that. He takes those feuding families and just calms them. Yeah. <laughs> Survey says. Steve Survey Harvey. says ninety days. <laughs> suck it. <laughs> Jesus, stop it, lady. What the Who fuck? is this in the back there? Six reasons why Steve Harvey should not give relationship advice. <coughs> He's it. Clearly, it's this a fucking This chick hot thinks topic. she's at the Magic Johnson Theaters back here. <laughs> she's talking to the show. That's our, uh, that's our Robin Quivers over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> except... It, Except in... S- we got a <laughs> hole in the bush. Except we need a soundproof booth. She needs to uh, go to her own studio at home. That's yeah. what she needs to do. But she likes right, it. I won't fix right. that. Right. Thank Mel- you. I think that's funny. Thanks. I, I think too, can I take just, what you just I, said about how he does on the Family Feud? Because that's hilarious. Yeah. That's my name. He I, does a I, great I, job, by the way. He, the ju- he does feud. absolutely nothing. When, when somebody says a dumb answer, he just looks at them like this. <laughs> Yeah, but, and he just sells it for ten seconds, yeah. and the camera guys all know. All right, Steve's doing his face. Camera yeah. two, get in. It just yeah. zooms in dude, on dude. him, going, "What an idiot!" And then he just goes, "All right, let's see what the survey says." <laughs> and then the survey goes, "Pating," and he goes, "Yeah." 
and they zoom in again. That should be the show. It's and, the best. And, and, it should be the and, by the way, and by the way, Family Feud has never been funnier than with Steve Harvey doing that. Yes, it's just I agree. mind blow. It kills. You got to look be, up. By the way, everybody yeah, is here good. and anywhere has to look up. There's one where uh, an old lady's on, and it's things that you smoke in public, and she no, goes no. a joint. This little old lady, and Steve goes. <laughs> And he holds it for like 35 sure. seconds. They cut to the audience. They're just dying. Steve's just killing with this yeah. one move. He's not saying a fucking thing. This guy's killing. Slaughtering. Just. But then that should be it. When, he, when he goes, all right, let's see what I mean. There's no way, but let's see what the service. Uh. And then he holds it again, making millions of dollars per year. show should be called like Black this. People Make the Craziest Faces. <laughs> Well, that's just that family should be a joke. rude. That should be part well, of the just joke. Just tie it in that that's the face he makes when he's getting a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, great job. Give you a thousand faces to get laid. S- stick with it. Next time I want to hear <laughs> ten minutes of Steve Harvey. That's jokes funny. Straight. It's funny. Thanks so much. It's actually a guy and a girl, Tony. And if you just Google search Steve Harvey marijuana, it's one of the yeah. funniest. You got to look up Steve Harvey marijuana. That's the, uh, that's, that's the most important thing. This is the part of the show where we move on to our two fabulous regulars. There are two lovely females that have been doing stand-up here. A brand new minute each week. They're the only two regulars. It's amazing to watch them grow. It's always fun. Very exciting. Put your hands together for our first regular tonight. She's a, she dropped out of the University of Florida after doing her very first comedy spot right here there. on this stage. Yeah, you were. That was, uh, you told her to stop. Yeah. You, you were like, <laughs> go back to school. What are you thinking? Yeah, and here on episode 75 with her 75th new minute, put your hands together for Kimberly Congdon. Thank you. I uh, I went to a Starbucks really early this morning, 7:30. I was waiting in line for a coffee, and the guy in front of me ordered a decaf and a chocolate milk, but he didn't have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a kid in the corner, and it looked like he was trying to lure the kid out of the Starbucks. <laughs> and the only thing I could think was, who the fuck drinks decaf at 7 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. I don't trust anybody that drinks decaf. Uh, drinking decaf is like buying lingerie and then jacking someone off. <laughs> It's like putting a condom on and then masturbating. It doesn't make sense. I really liked church when I was younger. <laughs> Segways. <laughs> when I was a teenager specifically, because uh, no one suspects you get fingered in those bathrooms. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. 59 seconds. That was awesome. Uh, I'd like Thank to hear you. a second alt that's not sexual for uh, for the uh, um, what the fuck was it? Church. No, the, the one before the condom? that. Condom. Yeah, before yeah that that that's thing. Yeah. I think you replaced condom with something else. What's the comparison again? Oh oh, Andre I and giving hand jobs. Oh, I forgot the one I was gonna say. Again. I was gonna say it's like uh, being on birth control when you're celibate. Well, well, what's the thing? What's it about? Oh, uh, drinking decaf coffee. Oh, yeah, it's that's terrible. such a that's such a great premise. And and there's and yes and yes. It's, it, the both references can't be sexual though. Yeah, the sexual one should be second or third even to something not sexual. You know, uh, like uh, God, decaf well, in the morning. Yeah, that really is a fucked up thing. Like, yeah. what kind of weirdo do you have to be? Yeah. People with and heart I conditions. Also- but he is the weirdo. He's the guy luring yeah. the kid into the parking lot. That's what lot. I'm saying. It was also from the kid, the part from him it's taking the kid. It's like doing coke, trying to go to bed. <laughs> it's just I mean, something weird it's, like it's that. It's super weird. Like having yeah. a decaf coffee at 7 in the morning it's is like human. having a virgin margarita at 7 in the morning. <laughs> it's like saying no to a blowjob. Yeah. Writer's Guild. I think you did two, j- <laughs> you did two jokes almost... In, within one joke, and it kind of took away from the whole joke. Okay. Because you had one joke was about decaf coffee, and the other joke is about someone buying chocolate milk, and he doesn't have a kid with him, which is a joke about being a pedophile and trying to fucking get somebody out of there, which are t- I think should be two separate jokes. Okay. Because humor is the guy's buying a chocolate milk, 
at least he's like getting people out of the line so you can get the coffee quicker or something along the lines of that. You know, but you had two jokes in one premise that ultimately diluted both jokes. Gotcha. But were you saying that pedophiles drink decaf? <laughs> I think so. Which is funny. I think that's right. what that has to mean, yeah. yeah. That should be a punchline right there. You know, yeah. yeah. That, but that's, that's got to be your first one. Right. You know. Exactly. Pedophiles drink decaf. It's true. Because the last thing they want to do is it take a shit be. while they're fucking a kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. And, yes. al- and, and also... That's why I'm here. And of course... <laughs> Of course a pedophile would drink decaf at 7 a.m. because the kids are already in school. You don't get caffeinated until they're about to get out at like 2.30, 3 o'clock. Get Aunt- fucking wired. Yeah. Okay, I guess pedophilia uh, jokes aren't... Uh, <laughs> no, I closed it on yeah, the huge yeah. laugh. And Kurt like Fox. you need you need caffeine to like take it's a Kurt kid Fox too. is like the Steve What's Harvey the of the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just I love you Kurt. a look. <laughs> That's a great look. Zoom in camera one. You had two <laughs> jokes there. You somehow can intertwine them better or separate them and then make them one joke. That's all I'm saying. Because okay. they're both funny. Mm-hmm. I agree with Sam because I've hurt his feelings a lot tonight. So. No, you didn't. <laughs> at all. Not one point. I'm dead on the inside, brother. <laughs> dead on the inside? Yeah. Why? Just give him the look. Give him the Harvey thing. <laughs> <laughs> you said what? Uh, Kim, that was great. Survey says Thank yes, you. you are. Bang! Good joke. Um. Yeah. So funny, and you, you landed on exactly um, one minute. So you did it again. Thank cool. you so much, Kimberly Thanks. Congdon. Everybody, she's on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, our other regular, super funny, super cool, awesome style. Put your hands together for Sarah Weinshank. What's up? Who the fuck decided to associate? foil with the future (laughs) it's fucking drippy (laughs) were they just like yeah there's gonna be a lot of meth we're gonna need a lot of foil no refrigeration and no microwaves we're gonna need foil we need a sponsor for the future Reynolds is on it (laughs) what are we barbecuing the oh, fuck we could think of anything the best thing we could come up with was aluminum foil in the future someone decided that and that was a thing guys look at the fuck up <laughs> aluminum why not saran wrap we're so sprung on something that's fucking shiny makes no sense also the name egg roll makes no sense why don't they just call it a mini Asian burrito <laughs> that's what they should call it an oriental roller. <laughs> All right. Oriental roller. I just love that. <laughs> uh, you, uh, I love that. Um, yeah, the tinfoil line is great. You know, you lose me right. I mean, it was like applause break worthy. I felt like, you know, it didn't even get, even though it got an applause break, I feel like it didn't really get what it deserved. And then, but the pro- what, what, what was interesting was right after that, I got confused immediately because yeah. you, because you said what you said uh, you you nailed it with the future thing. Everybody I think pictures the same thing. Somebody wearing right. like some kind of weird helmet or hat. Oh, is that what you're talking about? The, the yeah. helmet. I had no idea what yeah, you were I, talking about. But then really? what do you say you next? Set what that do you, up. What do you say right after that? I don't know, man. Yeah. Oh, you have no <laughs> idea. I mean, like honestly. I wanted to get all my aluminum jokes out that like I lost track of time and I was like really pissed off that I wasn't going to get Reynolds out and that was like in my head. Wait, you, you're talking about the tinfoil hats, like the conspiracy yeah. theory people? No. That, the, the, that's the future part you're talking about? No, like if you look up 1950s future, they're really into like fucking foil. <laughs> Which is, you didn't tell anybody that. Yeah. I, well, I thought that talking. everyone knew that. I don't know. Is that an assumption? When you assume, Google don't assume searches? anyone knows anything, really. Because yeah. it's all part of the setup. I don't know if you've watched yeah. the show, but nobody knows anything. I, think I don't it, know. I think... Uh, I think it works. I think most people probably picture... I, there's definitely an association with foil in the future. I don't think it really what? matters. Yeah. Oh. Where do you, do you get this from? That? It killed. The joke killed. I mean, you could, the you joke could killed. I had no idea what was going on. But, I, 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 but it lost totally students totally because they're, like, they're waiting for you to explain that line. You just came up like, when did foil become the future? And you're like, oh, yeah. And, it died off when, like, okay, what, what exactly are you talking about? I thought I missed a so news story or something. That yeah. was, like, I, really? I thought it was like, oh, shit, I didn't read TMZ. What I will okay. say is that your 
much better on stage than the last couple times I've done the show. Not that you weren't good there, but man, yeah. your your delivery is so much better. You're way more confident. It was, it's fun to watch, man. Thank you. And I and I agree, but I will also tell you this as a friend. <laughs> You said fuck 19 times in a minute. You're right. I opened with fuck. Not great. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I got excited. You got to save it for special o- you occasions. Use it. It's like water and water world. You know, you know? it's... <laughs> you use it... If you really believe in... You know, use it occasionally. Because when you write a joke out, if you're not saying fuck... While you write the joke out, you don't need to say fuck on stage. That's really good advice. That's why I'm here. Great advice. Yeah. Right <laughs> Thank true. you. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was a great Thank set. You. Very awesome good. Thank you. Great. Aluminum awesome. foil. Best outfit of the day. Best outfit. Thank you. Hey, Tony, Ice Cream Fire's here again. Whoa, one of our favorite bands in the world, Ice Cream Fire. They're great. And they're available on iTunes. So and we're listening to this right now. But Scott Kidd, thank you so much. You're at Devo Kid on Twitter. That's Good job, man. D O K I D. You stood strong. You didn't say a lot, but I knew you were there. You stood better than anyone's ever stood before. You killed on this pot. You're standing. Is going to blow be, up on be, this Be podcast. honest with me. Were you asleep for the uh, most of this? I thought you were. It's Kirk Box, you're on Twitter at Kirk Box. Yes, I am. Anything else you want to promote? That's fine. For those of you in third world countries, uh, the test is coming out soon. No, I think it's all done. They already got it. They don't get. It. They don't get it later. Like uh, it's boom, all boom. good, man. <laughs> I'm Tony Hinchcliffe. Our sponsor is Elise Elise Lane, E L Y S E L A I N, on Twitter. She's amazing. She made us great stuff tonight. Uh, Come see me and Red Band in Toronto in November. That's right. Sam, what do you got? Uh, I am going to be at the Sacramento Punchline uh, the weekend of November 13th, 14th, and 15th. Very excited to be headliner that weekend. And then New Year's, I will be doing. Uh, Toronto at the Underground Cafe. I'll yeah. be doing the New Year's oh, That's so. the best. Yeah, dude. We're going to be there be that entire Amazing. first week of November. Whenever the Dark Comedy Festival is, we'll be at the Underground as well. Um, yeah, go see Sam at the Sacramento Punchline. I've done that club with you before. You were the first comedian ever taken. I think me the there. three of us did it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a blast. Great show, guys. I'll be, golfing, I'll well. be golfing Bel Air tomorrow. <laughs> Kirk Fox is one of the funniest Bel-Air. people I know. Thank you, live audience. I love you. Episode 75. Later. This demon race was my poor fate Proclaim my angels ordained my sins on the sacred scroll Can't stay here, hold up, wait and so It's back to the chase that I'm late at the gate Cause I should've got away like 28 days ago On the radio, heard a message on a military base to go Don't taste me bro, these folks look sick like way much more than a cold And it takes a toll, pain's the same My dog won't make it to the basement hole Can't save him, no, they relay to aid him I return to favor, decapitated with ice rates Instead of purple rain, cause that long play is just too damn great to throw We'll save the soul